Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Avada Academy workshop, which will take us on a deep dive into creating new forecast profiles in Oracle's Demand Management Cloud. My name is Deb Bryant, the Marketing Coordinator at Avada, and I will be facilitating the webinar for you today. Presenting today are Sanjay Agarwal, VP of Operations at Avada, and Ann Nguyen, Supply Chain Consultant at Avada. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. All attendees will be muted throughout the presentation, which is being recorded. We encourage you to submit any questions that you may have through the webinar side panel. We will reserve time at the end of the webinar for Q&A, but we may also answer some questions as we go along. Our agenda today includes a very brief introduction to Avada for those of you who may not know us yet and then we will dive directly into our content. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Sanjay to get us started. Hello everyone, thanks, uh, thanks Deb. Hello everyone, before we get into the key subject matter, uh, a quick overview of the agenda. So what we'll do is we'll talk about Avada introduction first. Uh, we'll talk about um, who we are and what we do. Um, we'll talk about why forecasting profile is used, where it is used. Uh, we'll talk about uh, a little bit of an overview on forecasting profile, and then we'll go deep dive into forecasting profile, how it is configured to make it work. And then we will end with final thoughts and some question and answers. So a quick overview uh, of Avada, who we are and what we do. Avada is a global consulting firm with offices across different continents. Um, we have been in existence for about 20 years. Um, it is a, we are a single source partner providing a host of services, mostly on our domain. We have three business units, SEM Cloud, ERP Cloud, and EPM Cloud. And we provide different services. We provide end-to-end -end consulting services starting from assessment, roadmap implementation and managed services. We also provide management consulting, education and training services on all these three different practices. From, from Avada perspective, our, our key people, our, our key strengths are our people. Uh, our consultants have deep industry background. They have actually been practitioners in the industry. Um, so basically what happens is uh, the practitioners can understand the business knowledge from the users, from the end users very easily and map it onto the application. So we, our people is one of our, our, our key strengths from our perspective. We always strive for 100% customer satisfaction and referentiability. We always believe that your success is our success. So we want to make sure that you are successful on the projects. And several of our customers have actually focused, have actually presented on different webinars and different forums, whether it is uh, modern business experience or different supply chain panels. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have been in existence for about 20 years now. Um, so we have deep knowledge on Oracle platform. So what we have done in, in the past 20 years, we have kind of created several solutions that can bridge the gap that is existing in Oracle application on different modules. And so our strategy is uh, basically uh, we our key strategy is where strategy me, meets execution, right? So our, our consultants who have deep industry industry experience, they can bring in a strategy and then map it onto the application to make sure the whole application can work uh, in the way that meets your business experience. So that is that is the key Avada advantage uh, from from uh, from the consulting services that we provide. At this point in time, let me invite Anne. Anne Nguyen is, is a very strong solution architect. She has been uh, in the industry uh, for several years, and then she uh, she has been in in the software consulting services 
for quite some time now as well. Um, she has been focusing on Demandra for about five, seven years. And now last three, four years, she's been on DM Cloud. So she has a knowledge of both Demandra, which was the old demand planning tool. And she also has very good knowledge, in-depth knowledge on DM Cloud as well. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Why do we use a forecasting profile in DM Cloud? So demand management cloud basically provides forecasting modules with flexible user interfaces and analytics to anticipate your demand. The process of how to use the forecasting models and parameters are stored in forecasting profiles. Oracle provides what we call out of the box or seeded profiles based on standard leading practices. These profiles cannot be modified, thus might not meet your unique practices. So let's look at basically what Oracle provides out of the box for the forecasting profiles. Forecasting profile basically houses the parameters that are used in the forecasting engine for DM Cloud. Oracle provides four profiles. Two are based on shipment data, basically generating a forecast based on what you shipped out or what you invoiced. The other two are based on bookings data, basically what you booked for your products, regardless of shipments. The forecasting profile also utilizes a standard definition table. Uh, sometimes it's called a forecasting table, similar to what the mantra has. This definition table basically defines the levels that the engine will use to generate a forecast. For example, if you set it to item and organization, it'll generate a forecast if it finds adequate history. DM Cloud allows us to set up and run multiple forecasting profiles. The seeded forecasting profiles comprise of two used for generating a booking forecast. The first one is just standard booking data that you have to generate bookings forecast. You can also generate a bookings forecast that includes promotional activity. They all use one standard table that Oracle provides for bookings. The other two profiles are based on your shipment data. One is standard shipment forecast uh, using your standard shipment data. And one, the other one is basically shipments forecast with promotional shipments included. And it also uses one standard table for your shipments definition. Both of these profiles for shipments and bookings uses what Oracle call a deep composition group, which basically are causal factors, ways for Oracle's engine to see a trend in your shipments or booking data. So you can have a causal factor that looks at seasonality, holidays. So all four of these profiles uses the same area of these causal factors. In terms of what the forecasting profiles have, there's three key sections. You have one section is the forecasting methods, basically all of the models that Oracle provides. The decomposition groups, Oracle will provide the standard groups for you. Forecasting parameters that will be used by the engine to generate your forecast. It also identifies the following inputs of basically your forecast tree, forecast definition, the source data for you to use to generate your forecast your final data stream to store the resulting forecast, the stats forecast. So what is a forecasting table? Basically, this table will let you define the data stream to use for the input, whether it'll be the seeded, shipments, history data stream that Oracle provides or your own that you create the data stream to store the resulting forecast. Again, what levels could the forecast be generated by the engine? It provides 
the mapping of the levels that you're going to have the engine to check if there's enough history to generate a forecast. So these levels should be based on your business requirements. The forecast definition has three key areas. The first one is measures, then the levels. These are basically the, your business requirements where you want to generate a forecast at either item organization or item customer. The layout, basically how the engine will look at those particular levels to review your historical data and try to generate a good forecast. So the seeded profiles that are provided by Oracle uses for the forecast definition, item, organization, and one level on top of item, which they call a category level one. In order for you to use them, you would have to populate these levels. They also use their standard data inputs, uh, final shipment history, forecast as their output, and your final shipment forecast. Here's an example from a business requirement of what a forecasting tree could be in table. In this example right now, this customer wants to forecast at the lowest level first, your item and country. From there, we can go to item and country group. Then we can look at the item and region, and then a higher level than the item, a category and a region. This is to tell the engine, basically, you know, if you don't have enough history to generate a forecast, you want to go to a higher level. In terms of DM Cloud layout, what matters the most is if you have your levels in the x-axis right here. Let's look at how we're going to configure a forecasting profile and a forecast tree definition if we can't use the standard out of the box. So why can't we use what Oracle provides? Maybe you want to forecast a different level other than item and organization, maybe at item and customer, or you want to use the different parameters that Oracle provided for the engine parameters, or you want to use a totally different input demand, the one that you created yourself. The recommended process for creating a new forecasting profile is first, we want to duplicate what Oracle has provided out of the box. You know, use that as a starting point. And before we can create a forecasting profile, we need to create the forecast definition before you create the forecast profile. The first step, once you're in a demand plan, you want to navigate to actions, manage tables, graphs, and analysis. Set. Once you're there, you want to find the needed definition table and, du and duplicate it. So you do a search, and these are the two out-of-the-box definition table that Oracle provides, bookings and shipments. So select the table that you want. If you're going to forecast for shipment, select forecast shipment. You know, go to action, duplicate the table. You want to provide a unique name. Tables need to have unique names, can't have the same name. Now, you can see all these different sections in the table. In the measures tab, what you want to do is you're going to select what is going to be your history input, what will be used to generate the forecast, where the forecast will be stored, the measure, the cyclical forecast, and then the final forecast. The next tab that Critical is your hierarchies. Basically, these are the levels for the engine to use to generate a forecast. In this example, if you want to generate a forecast at the month, because your plan is at the month level and it's at the item and customer, you know, you'll select the month. Here, you can select these are the levels available for the customer that you define from your business requirement. We'll select customer, for example, customer class. And then you have item. The next tab is the layout. Basically, this is where you would indicate to the engine, use the following order 
of the levels to generate a forecast. You have here item and customer. The engine will look at the level of item customer first, look at your relevant shipments or bookings data and see if it has enough history to generate a forecast. If it doesn't, it'll go basically to item and customer class as an example. And these are your data streams for us to store your forecast and then pull your shipment history or bookings data. Some general guidelines for generating your forecast tree. It requires that basically you have one level from the item size and then levels from or customer size. The forecast tree must also include three forecast levels. In this, in this example, you'll see that it has several. This customer would like to generate a forecast at item and country first. If not, then it's at item and a country grouping. If not available, then you have item and then region. And then from there, if it's not available at item region, you go to category four and region. After you've created your forecast definition table, the second step is now you can create your forecasting profile. Okay. In the demand plan, basically navigate to task, configuration, manage forecasting profile. Again, find the needed forecasting profile. As you can see, there's four that's available and duplicate it. Once you click on the duplicate, You'll provide a unique name for the profile. You're going to assign the forecast definition table that you created earlier. You also want to make sure that you select the same input and output stream as it was in your created forecast definition table. Select the measure catalog to use. If you created your own measure catalog for the plan to use, select that. Otherwise, you can select the Oracle standard one if you're using the Oracle standard one. Now, there's the three tasks that you can go in and modify as needed. You can modify basically the forecasting methods, the causal factors, or the engine parameters. In forecasting methods, you have the ability to select out of the 14 what is active in your plan. So, Oracle will out of the box, select your most common model to use. So you can not use it by unselecting the access, or if you want to use a particular one, you'll select it. You can also change the minimum and maximum observation days for this. Once you're done, you'll hit save, then you'll move on to the next tab. Decomposition groups, basically, these are your causal factors, and Oracle will provide the seeded causal factors and the standard settings. You can basically expand on each of these groups that Oracle provides and either select it or unselect it. You know, you can also create your own causal factors too, and you'll see it in here if you, you created them, and then you can select it. Once you're done, my apologies, you can basically Click on save and then move on to the next tab, which is forecasting parameters. The forecasting parameters are basically engine inputs that it can use to tell the engine to generate your forecast based on some settings that you provide. For example, in this particular Setting its periods into access. This is how many days that you have a shipment of booking forecast that the engine consider that it's a good combination, good item, you know, location, or good customer to generate forecast. You can modify this value. Oracle provides the standard of 14. Or periods into an access where Oracle is saying, you know, in their seated, it's 182 days, right? Six months, around six months, 
before the engine will consider that if you have no shipments or booking data, that it's going to be inactive. It won't generate a forecast for it. You can modify these parameters as needed. And then you'll hit save and close to exit out. The third step is basically now that you have a new forecasting profile, you want to assign it to your plan. You can basically go into manage plans, okay? So that's the plan that you want to add this forecasting profile to. Click on action and edit plan. It will basically open up the edit screen. Navigate to the demand tab and then to the forecasting profile section where you'll see an icon of a plus. You'll add basically a new forecasting profile. You'll see add row. You'll select which profile to add it in. Okay. Once you select it, you'll, you can click on save and close the plan and run it later on, or you can click save and run and you'll run the plan based on your new forecasting profile. Run means basically generate the forecast. Okay. So when you run the plan with a profile, you want to make sure that you select the forecasting profile that you just added on, and then click OK. And basically, once the plan is complete, you'll have a new forecast based on your new profile that you generated. Final thoughts. So first, determine if the out-of-the-box forecasting profiles and forecast definition meets your requirements. If it does, you don't have to configure a new one, okay? If it doesn't meet your requirements or you want to add something different to it, you can follow the recommended steps to create the profiles and forecast definition. And from there, you have a, basically a business process-driven solution. Sanjay, do you want to take over now for the Q&A? Oh, yes, absolutely. And that was uh, pretty informative. Thank you for explaining about the configurations around forecasting profiles and what forecasting profile says. Um, I'm seeing uh, three questions then uh, on the panel. Um, and uh, team, um, if you have any other questions, feel free to write up on the on the side panel and then we can we can answer that. So the first question that I'm seeing uh, and is, what are the differences between the forecasting profiles in Demandra versus DM Cloud? So DM Cloud is easily managed, right? Because the, any user from the user interface can access the profile, make changes to their profile, create a brand new forecast tree versus the mantra before you had to go in the back end, you had to have basically access from like either a super user or IP access to access that data. Okay. All right, so basically you mean uh, in Demandra, there is a separate application called, called Business Modeler, which needs to be accessed to create the forecasting profile. But um, the UI on, on DM Cloud, it's all HTML based. So you really don't have correct. to log into different uh, different application. Is that what you mean? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. All right. The second question that uh, I'm seeing here is: If you are running multiple profiles, how does Engine generate the forecast? I guess the question is around sequencing or parallel run. Mm -hmm. So it won't run it in parallel. So if you've got two or three profiles checked, it'll run the first profile first, and then once it completes, it'll run the second one, and then the third one. So it'll be all in sequential. Yeah. Got it, got it, okay. And the last question that I'm seeing here is, how many models are uh, there in DM Cloud? Um, there's 14 models that Oracle provides out of the box. Okay, all right. Um, there is one more question that I'm seeing. Um, mm -hmm. If Demandra exists, 
in Demandra simulations exist. What's the function in DM cloud? Let me reframe the question. And so Demandra has simulations, right? So what uh -huh. is the fun similar function in DM cloud? Yeah, so DM cloud does have the simulate. Their functionality is called simulate demand. So that's available. In simulate demand, it's actually similar to what uh, the mantra has for DM cloud. Once you go and select the item and it's generating a forecast uh, when at that item level that you select it, you can basically select different profiles. So you can select a simulation profile if you choose to create one. You can generate a forecast based on the profile that you're using. So it's very similar and I think ease of use is the same as in the mantra. You know, you just highlight a combination and then right click and simulate demand. So that's available. All right. Um, another question, is there a limit to how many forecasting profile you may have per plan? Uh, no, I haven't seen a limit on it yet. I've seen one with two or three. So just be cognizant of the fact that the more profiles you have and the more models, like the changes you have, it might take longer to run the plan to generate forecasts based on whatever parameters you have. Basically, you know, if you have one profile, it might run in less than 10 minutes. Two profile might take 20 minutes, you know, three. So you just have to be cognizant of the fact that there might be a performance with running multiple profiles. All right, sounds good. There is one more question that is popping up. Uh, are, are there a forecast profile for simulations? Uh, no, you can create one, but out of the box, there's only one for shipment right, and bookings that is used by what we call the batch and the simulation process. If you want to use a different one for the simulation, you can create your own, but out of the box, they don't provide a just a simulation only profile. All right, the next question is around why does DM Cloud Simulate Demand run so much slower than run simulation in Demantra? Is there any way for me to accept a simulation in DM without running it twice? Oh, yes. So that functionality is not available right now. Yes, so um, I think Oracle probably will have to look at adding that functionality into Cloud DM. Uh, right now, there's several options, right? Uh, you can run it again and place it in there, or you can copy and paste easily now with the copy and paste functionality from the simulation measure into your override as another one, or, you know, some customers have made, uh, created their own measure for housing the for that forecast, and they can override it with the simulation, you know, update it. So those are your options right now until Oracle comes out with that except check. All right, more questions popping up, Anne. Um, is there a way for me to save a forecast profile onto a specific selection of items or customers so that this is the only forecast that it generates? Uh, yes, so you can use an analysis set and assign it to your plan and uh, your model. If you're familiar with uh, VM Cloud, there's the ability for you to basically say, save, you know, what we call an analysis set. Once you have the analysis set saying, these are the items and customers that I want to generate a forecast with different parameters, when you're running any of your forecasting profiles, you can apply that analysis set, okay? so. Just look at looking at uh, analysis set and creating one. So, all right, all right, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, the next one, will execution of simulation only affect the combination or all the information, all the combinations in the table? 
it depends on the table selection that you select in DM Cloud. So uh, DM Cloud, basically when you're running a simulation, it'll ask you, do you want to run it on the entire table or the table with selected, what you've highlighted, or the table with your pivot, you know, your filters. So if your particular table has all of the items and if you select table, then it'll run for all your items. But what I always recommend is when you're in a table and you know it has all the information, all your items, but you're only selecting one or two combinations to run it, run the simulation with items were selected only, okay? Or if you have created your own custom table and it's only one combination, that's where you would run a simulation with table only. It's just dependent on how you create your table or you know where you want to run the uh, simulation. So the information in there. All right, fantastic. And um, the other question that I'm seeing here is, does the tuning in DM Cloud uh, process is similar to Demantra or is it different? Yes, the process is similar. Yes. Basically, you know, in a test environment, you can select different models, run, right, your engine, run the plan, and then see the results of it. So, yes, the same process applies in DM Cloud. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, and uh, those were some of the questions that I'm seeing, and I think we are running a little bit uh, kind of short of time. But um, if you have any other questions, feel free to send us an email. Deb, if you want to provide the email and the contact information for people to send out the email. We for sure will we'll be doing that following the webinar. Thanks, Ann and Sanjay, for uh, this presentation. Those are some really great questions. Before we conclude, I just want to call your attention to two of our upcoming cloud webinars, one of them on best use cases for Oracle supply planning in demand management cloud suite, and the other will discuss Avada's cloud roadmap analysis as the first step towards improving supply chain performance. And again, we thank you for joining us today, and we do invite you to contact us via email, visit our website, or follow us on social media to learn more.